Okay, a lot of people have been talking about it. There's a lot of buzz about it. Today we're going to unlock the mystery of one of the most iconic hats on the planet, the Borsellino Alessandria. Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Kevin. It's good, good to see you. Really great to see you today. The weather's been crazy. It's been raining straight for like two, four days. It looks like just kind of stopped for a minute or maybe slowed down a little. Yeah, I still see umbrellas, but it's still crazy. There's a lot to talk about. A lot of things afoot, a lot of things I'm involved in, a lot of things I want to teach you and tell you. Um, the Kevin Todd Gerber Hat Company is definitely uh, away, uh, on its way, I mean, uh, yeah, uh, away, you know, like a, a bump and away. And um, it's uh, gonna be a private label. Um, most likely we're going to start working with McGill hats first. I love their felt and I love the variety that they have. There's a lot of different colors, different textures. They even do wool felts. They'll even do flat brims, open crown, pencil rolls, derbies, homburgs. We guys, we can design anything we want. Uh, like a, a beaver homburg with pinches, uh, right? And like a steely blue gray with no bound edge. How about that? Like a silk finish? Ooh, that'd be great. Steaming, I'm taking steamings now, um, just like I did before in the city. I'll do, you know, I'll take a hat and I'll do everything that it needs. Uh, when I see it, you know, if there are loose threads, I'll do that. If the band is wrinkled, I'll fix that. Uh, if the brim is too soft, I'll fix that. If it's drooping, I'll get the brim, you know, everything. I'll get the wrinkles out, I'll clean the hat. Um, the inside and then whatever needs to be done, I'll basically, you know, detail the hat as best as I can. I could do custom shapes if you guys want to buy an open crown from someplace and you want to just do a nice cattleman crease or an old timey teardrop or something special, you can have the hat shipped to me and we'll do that. Um, the rate's going to be $30 for the first hat, $20 for each additional hat after that, uh, plus shipping. Shipping is usually not that bad. Um, it's hard for me to say exactly what it is going to be right now. Is it be fifteen dollars or, or or whatever twenty? It's hard to say after I ship another maybe two, three hats. I'll be able to estimate it at this point. Um, you, know, you can estimate it and give me a twenty or something if it's a simple uh, you know one hat. Or um, what we can do is you pay for the job. I go to the post office, find out what the rate is, and I just, you know, send you the, uh, the information then and say, okay, I just paid uh, $17 and I'll send you the tracking and stuff. So you pay me twice, you know. Also, the vintage hats, I'm still selling the vintage hats. Uh, I'm getting nicer ones as I, you know, I, I don't want to just grab stuff and grab stuff. I'm trying to grab things that are new, that are rare. Um, you know, new, I mean, like, hats from the 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s that still look unworn. New old stock. I'm buying a lot of that stuff. Um, and uh, those you can also reach me. I'm going to post pictures and prices of that stuff uh, soon. Uh, but if there's anything that you're interested in that you see on my little list, you could just call me. I'll let you know. Or if there's something you're looking for, I have friends that do the same thing. They hunt down vintage hats and we can exchange lists. I can say, hey, you know, to this guy or that guy, I can ask RJ, the guy with the stingers, he does it too. We can um, tell each other to look out for stuff and uh, we swap too. So um, this, my friend, is something I really want to show you. We've been talking a lot about this on the Facebook group. This is a Borsellino Alessandria model. Okay, I know Al has been talking about this. William, hi, hi William. Um, a lot of people uh, have been talking. Oh, actually, Al, he's a he's a film wearer. The film is almost the exact same crown as this. It's a boxy crown. You know, the boxy crown it has no taper. It's not tapered like a letter A. It's straight up. Okay. The Alessandria is um, it's a legendary hat. Now you're gonna go online and you're gonna see Alessandria, Borsellino Alessandria, all over the place because people pick these hats up and the only word that's written in there is Borsellino Alessandria, uh, quality this and that, and the year that they were made, what, uh, when Borsellino was you know, born. 
So basically, everybody thinks Alessandria is the model, but it's just the town that they were exported from. So the Orsolina Alessandria, the town they come from, you know. But if it's a real Alessandria, it's going to say it in the sweatbands like that, okay, with quotation marks. That's the way it is, right? The Orsolino Alessandria is an open crown hat, open crown, okay? It comes with a bound edge, right? A boxy crown is open crown, bound edge. Silver belly is the classical color for it. Let's see if I can adjust the lights here a little. Um, it's very, very beautiful and elegant in black. It's one of the most elegant hats I can think of on the earth. A black Borsalino, what's more elegant than that? Um, it's gorgeous, um, but it's quite different. This is the hat that Johnny Depp wears. He's very famous, you know, for having dozens of these and stuff. Um, if you watch old films like, you know, Public Enemy, uh, all those James Cagney and, you know, those old gangster movies for the black and white ones and stuff. You know how you always see there's a bunch of gangsters together or like a bunch of men standing together and they got guns and stuff. They've got like a gray hat, a gray hat, a black hat, a Hamburg, a gray hat, right? Generally, there's always one guy who's got a light colored hat on. You ever notice that? One guy's got a light hat color. They always do that to try to like mix it up, you know, so you don't have all the same hats. This is the hat they're always wearing. It's, it's a whitish hat, silver belly, with a thin ribbon like that, okay? It's somewhat like an open road, but it's not because it doesn't hang down like a cowboy string tie and curl up. See the way it's attached? This is a modification that I like to do to open roads and straddle irons so that those things don't curl around. You put a tack stitch and you put it on the side like Borsalino does. Here's a giveaway if people don't want to know you know, is that a Stradliner? Is that a Borsalino? Is, what is it, you know? Somebody asked me to ID a hat the other day on Facebook. That's a good way. That's, okay, the wind cord, obviously, okay? Um, a Stradliner Premier is a very similar hat. It's just very, very thick. The quality is not, you know, nearly the same, but it's kind of boxy and open crown like this, the same kind of spec. That does not have a wind cord, and it doesn't have a band like this. The band is quite different. The bow, excuse me, the bow, okay? Um, Alessandria is a, just a legendary hat. I sold just hundreds and hundreds of these during the Ida period and before that during the Jack Lambert period. Many, many of these. We sold them in olive, in brown, in black, in silver belly. Occasionally we got them in like a pearl gray or a regular gray too. Um, silver belly is the main color everybody wants. For years and years, I used to see guys coming in with with these porcelain Alessandras, a little beat up and stuff, and for years, for decades, and then they stopped because JJ stopped carrying them. Um, and you can't get these in the US anymore. They're very hard to get, okay? But Ben Craft Hatters has them. Okay, I wanna talk about them too. Two of my guys out there went to Ben Craft. Uh, one, I tried to meet you out there. I couldn't, I was like about an hour late. so. I wanted to meet you, um, and another guy just went also. He told me, you know, one guy got a Claudio, and another fellow got a, a Biltmore, a Watson, which is a great hat. Um, it's a two-inch, kind of a Saxon type of thing, a two-inch brim, uh, like a Stetson type hat. It's made by Biltmore, okay, Biltmore USA, welted edge, two-inch brim, fur felt, American-made. It's $145, so... Okay, so the Watson is like one of those deals, like, like wow, you picked that up, smart choice, you know. Um, it's 145 bucks at Ben Craft Hat, it's, it's a, uh, a fur felt Biltmore, so good choice on that one. And here's the other thing, these guys, they're the only ones who carry the Alessandria Open Crown, the real deal one, um, in the USA that I found, Bencraft, and get this, it's not on their website. And he didn't even know it wasn't on their website. It's a slow hat for them, nobody asks for it. They've been carrying them for like 30 years, 35 years. And it's been the same quality superior ever since, but it's slowed down, you know, it's slowed down. So it's one of those things that only a specialty guy asks for every once in a while. They're selling them for 350, okay? People are getting 450 and more for Borsalinos nowadays. It's a standard price. Um, so, guys, this is, I'm telling you, 
jump on these Wally has them. Um, this is a gorgeous hat. I just got this. It's a little, little, little bit small for me. I know I can fix it. But this is, oh, what a specimen this is. This is a, a real deal gangster hat from the 40s and stuff. This is uh, late 40s, possibly early 50s. Borsalino in super condition, okay? It's basically open crown. It looks like it was creased, but not steams, okay? Um, it doesn't really look used. It looks new. The tags, the, the, um, the lining, it's so white and pristine. Everything, it's really, really clean. Even the little bow here, which is a real giveaway that a hat hasn't even been worn. Uh, I think this hat has been worn, maybe, maybe tried on or worn. Maybe it was sitting in some vintage shop or somebody's house and then they played with it a couple of times. But I don't think it was really owned and worn like a person's hat and they wore it and wore it and stuff. It looks to me pretty much brand new. And this is from the golden age. It comes with the, um, the tags, okay? The lining is dead new. There is no damage anywhere. My eyesight sucks though, you know what? No, no, look at that. There's no damage anywhere. The wind cord, everything. It's brand new. There's not one moth bite. There's not one flaw in this hat. Oh my God. No, no, maybe I should raise the price a little. Alessandria, guess what the price was with, on this front? Okay, I'm telling you they're, they're $450 now. You know what the retail price is? It's marked on here. $25, okay? This is like from the 40s and it's a brand new hat. Um, I'm starting to realize this is more like a, a $1,500 hat <laughs> than uh, what I thought it was. Um, this is, um, you know, it's a smaller size. It's a seven and one eighth, but um, it is definitely for sale. Although I really am thinking about keeping it right now. If somebody wants to grab it, um, the price is five, okay? Um, and it does look flawless. Let's see what it says. Quality Superiore, Alessandria, Marco Deposito, made in Italy, registered U.S. Patent Office. And then on the sales tag it says, Alessandria, Lot Avorio, price $25, American dollars. Okay, this is probably sold in the USA then. Made in Italy, original found it has 1857, all the regular logo stuff. There's a brand new fresh 718 tag on there. It just looks so clean. It looks like clean and the leather feels like doesn't even feel dry, guys. You can stretch this hat. This leather is so look how moist it is. Listen. Oh man. It's just so new. This is a time machine hat. Okay, I'm really nerdy, and I'm nerding out over this hat. It's got the wind cord, everything is intact and perfect. Wind cord is good. This is a hat that is brand new and has never been worn. Oh my gosh. All right, um, the, the Coliseum box up here, I was going to do this box for $50. Um, but yeah, that's tacky. We'll just, you know, it comes with this box, okay? I'm going to say that. Um, this hat did not come with the Coliseum box. It came with a different box, uh, another Borsalino box, but I'm throwing that one in with it. So this hat is 500 and I'm throwing in this, uh, this is the hat box. It has no tears, there are no splits, there are no corners that have been dented or anything. It still has the string on it, you know, handle. Um, water stain on the top. That's it. It says imported from Italy, Borsellino. Okay, the Colosseum box is one of the most beautiful sought after vintage boxes that people talk about. It's just a, it's one of those things like everybody wants, you know. The other one is the Stradaliner box that's shaped like a, uh, a trapezoid. They have a Stradaliner box that's kind of like a weird, uh, triangle shape and it's silver and has this really cool jet age uh, kind of logo stuff on it all right so this hat open crown we could do whatever we'd like with this hat okay if we want what we could do is we could do a little um like a, a cattleman action you know, 
cattleman is going to, you know, you could do this one day, okay, you could pop it out when you get to dinner, and you could say, you know what, let's just do a center crease, I feel simple today, I want a, I want a high looking crown, you can make the crown, super, super high crown just by making it higher like that, you could even get really rakish and make it, you know, like ridiculously high, um, you can make a little teardrop in it. You see the way this stuff behaves like the old time movies when you see those old teardrops that are down and they don't even have that thing? That's this felt. It's the way this stuff responds. It's very old. It's not a little old. It's very, very old. It's completely flawless. It looks unused. It's got... No, it looks a little... Thin. Yeah, okay, I see what it does. All right, and these little steaming. It's falling into like a little crooked divot at the very end there. All right. So let's open it up, because I didn't really start with a blank canvas. When you have little old creases in there, see there's an old crease. You just, if you want to feel what the old crease was, okay, you can see it, there's a little shadow of it. You just lightly just, there you go. That's the old shape that that person, now let's get the pinches, that's their pinches. Okay, the old shape is always in there, whether it's blocked or steamed, it's gonna live. No matter what you steam, <laughs> I mean, if you have to try really hard to get rid of it, but there it is. Okay, so my new crease was falling into the front of this old thing, which is slightly off-centered. Okay, does that make sense? So what we have to do is get rid of that old crease completely so that we can make a new center crease nice and cleanly. Okay, I'm not going to center crease it right now because I'll steam it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the crown and leave it. And just leave it, let it cool, and we'll crease this another time, okay? Now, that's your very, very first step when you're doing this. you got to get rid of the old shape. If it looks good, if you have a very beautiful center crease that looks absolutely perfect to you, you can keep it, okay, and work from there. Most of the time, that's not the case. All right, that looks nice. It looks really nice. I'm going to do it more. I'm going to put it on this uh, on this hat stretcher a little bit. And pull it against there. All right, we're going to let this uh, let's let this cool. We could come back to it in a bit, and we'll crease it again. That's the Borsalino Alessandria. Um, if you do shop on uh, McGill's website, um, mcgillhats.com, or if you go over to Ben Craft Hatters to buy, you know, like a Borsalino or whatever, you know, Stetson, um, or if you go to Delmonico's, tell them, or actually, or Manhattan too, you know, he's a good guy, uh, Raymond. Tell those guys that Kevin sent you, okay? The, it's not like I'm looking for something in return. I'm not getting any kickbacks or like, you know, prizes from them. Um, the idea is that if we keep sending them hats and guitars business, Kevin from YouTube, Kevin from JJ's, Kevin from hats and guitars, Kevin, Kevin sent me, Kevin sent me, Kevin suggested I come. Eventually I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna say, hey, I've been sending you a lot of customers, right? And be like, yes, yes, thank you very much. You know, mazel tov. And I'm gonna be like, look, um, we're a very good group. You know, we have a, a lot of uh, people, you know, very good serious hat guys. And, you know, we like to spend money on hats. But, um, you know, if we're uh, nice and loyal to you, why don't you give us a, uh, a discount code? So there we go, that's my little speech, my little sales pitch. So the idea is I'm gonna sell those guys on that. The fact that we sent them so many customers, hey, look, we, we deserve a discount code, right? So whatever, 10%, you know? That way, any hats and guitars of yours can go to like those three places and like, you know, concentrate on, or, or that one place or whoever gives it to us, you know? So, um, you know, let's say Ben at Delmonico starts getting like 20 customers a month from us or something, you know, it's like, look, you know, give us a little discount, right? Hey, or uh, Mr. McGill or something like that. So. That's what I'm trying to, to get. I, I want us to work collectively as cream of the crop hat lovers, cool hat lovers, not like, you know, those, uh, uh, what do you call, tip the fedora guys, um, neck beards dudes. Um, we're like the other guys. And um, 
What I'm thinking now is we, we stick together and we design a bunch of hats for this KTG company, collectively, what we want, all right? Um, after this green hat, this Kevin thing is done, um, maybe you guys want to do something like a Whippet or the, the, the Bel Air or, um, or a pencil roll hat, huh? Maybe a fedora with a pencil or like a, um, maybe he can make us a special hat. Maybe he could do the top like the open road. They have a hat called the Jackson. And then this, like a pencil roll, like a Tom Mix, like a bigger, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Like those hats that are on the very top of McGill sites with the big um, pencil rolls, the red ones. So, so that would be a bad hat, right? All right. Open road with a slightly bigger brim and a pencil curl. Like that kettle curl? Oh yeah, and silver belly. See, maybe that's our next hat, okay? Or like a, something like a, 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 a teardrop in beaver, uh, long hair beaver uh, finish, you know, in a really cool color with a bound edge. We can design what we want and we're gonna vote on it. And the idea is that um, we're gonna make such cool stuff that we're gonna wanna buy that stuff up. You know, I'll say, look, I got pre-orders for, you know, 30 of these. Um, we order 30 and then we go to the next hat. Hmm? Bam, bam, bam. And um, I have a job. You guys get to basically design your own hats, like a custom hatter. Instead of, you know, spending custom hatter money, you get to say, hey, look, I always wanted this hat in light blue, or I always wanted one of these in, in peluche, in, in cognac, whatever or a stingy brim. You always wanted a stingy in a good basic color or something, but like in a great felt, like a, you know, a loose beaver felt, something like, a, I keep saying beaver, a long hair finish, you know, silk, silk finish. So I'm very inspired by this idea that we could make custom hats and um, do it ourselves collectively. I think it's actually kind of revolutionary and um, I think uh, we should go for this, okay? so. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna try to make this hat, okay? And we might even make this hat in two colors if that's feasible, uh, the green, and then something else that's a little bit like, you know, everybody just really loves, like taupe or something. That the guys who cannot wear a Kelly green hat, they would get to wear a neat color like, you know, like this or something tasteful, but unique and custom because we're making custom hats, so. You know, we want something cool. Like, maybe you can never get a taupe Hamburg. Something that's simple, but like, we just can't get it, you know? We can order that. So that's the idea. I want to get us rolling on this project and, uh, you know, keep selling my vintage hats so uh, I have a job and, um, and do some fun things with you guys. And, you know, um, I'm planning on doing some cool things on the inside. Uh, like doing a private label kind of uh, graphics on the inside leather band, okay? Um, it's not that expensive, so we could write Hats and Guitars, Kevin's Hats and Guitars Limited Edition 1, or something like that. Um, we're going to have those cards. I'm having them professionally printed out, and they're looking for like a natural card stock to look like old and cowboy, like those old school ones were. Um, I have a friend of mine who has like people on it and stuff, so... Uh, every uh, vintage hat are going to have those um, coming up in the future. Uh, it might take me a week to get those cards done or so. And uh, if I don't get them, I'll make up a temporary batch. I'll just get some card stock and I'll, I'll run up some. But uh, we're going to have that. Um, stingers are coming. So you can get hats from me from KTG, uh, custom hats, where you can get vintage hats and then hook it up with a stinger. Maybe you want a hat brush that tucks into your band. Maybe you want a cigarette lighter uh, in gold with your monogram name letters on it or something that you could take out of your uh, band and flick it, you know? They're not that expensive. Uh, the simple ones, I believe, are 35. And then like, you know, if you go into something really complex like a cigarette lighter, it can get, you know, a little more expensive, but not crazy. Um, they're all pretty, like, affordable. And it's neat. Uh, half of it has like a sort of a utility knife blade covered with like a, a little leather sheath that you tuck into the band and it says stinger on it. And if you don't want the knife, let's say, you know, that's a problem for you, you can make it without the knife stinger. 
And you know, so what it is is one side is the, the knife stinger thing, the other side is like the medallion or the lighter or the hat brush or whatever you decide to put custom on there. Um, some people put a Stetson medallion, a cross, uh, a navy insignia, um, all sorts of stuff. You could put your, you know, your favorite band's name or Grateful Dead or something. Anything you could think of. He's got all kinds of weird natural things like porcupine quills and, I don't know, bird skulls and stuff. But, here. but I do want to do a slight little bit more steaming and show you a couple more techniques um, with the steaming and stuff. All right, so let's just go into that. Right. Here's a brim that's a little out of whack. Right? Let's straighten it out. It's had it's dusted. I know that. It's not dirty. So I'm going to give it the old tabletop method here. I'm leaning it at the edge against the table. I'm spinning it very slowly. Nice and straight. Not exactly perfect, but really nice. So I'm going to blend it now, the front to the back. I'm just using the weight of the hat tabletop and I'm kind of brushing it like that so that I get the flatness of the tabletop all the way around the front and the back of the brim at the same time just kind of leaning my hand on it but very lightly so I'm using the table as a straight edge so this hat has a very sort of interesting straight brim it's kind of a trilby type of brim it goes up in the back it's flat and then there's a very slight curve down so what we want to look for is on the sides, we want the sides to be straight. We don't want them wavy. Huh? Let's try the other side. That's not perfect this side, but it's okay. Alrighty. Now let's do that front. The front is really flat and needs to dip down a little bit. We steam the whole thing. There is no leather on the inside of this hat, so I'm going to steam the bottom. There's no leather sweat band. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on the tabletop like this. And now I'm going to bend the hat upwards and just keep it still. So that way the front is going down. Okay, now I'm going to check it and fix it with my fingers and get it just right. Hold it still. So you got just that little dip in the front. Back looks okay. What do we got a little something here? Is it? Let me check it out. Just rub from inside, see if I can feel a dent. No, it's okay. Might have been a little wrinkle on the band. A little ripple there in the back of the Room. Okay, over there I should sort of blend a little better. Like that, yeah. Tabletop, still hot and good. Let's check the front, make sure it stayed. Sometimes things will revert, they'll come back again. It could mean you don't have enough stiffener, it could mean you didn't steam it hard enough. Could mean you didn't dip it down enough. Maybe it needs to be further and it just fell back up again. Things like that do happen. So you gotta check it. Make sure it's good and it stayed. You could take a brim and just, you know, go like that. So you have to do it pretty flat handed, but you know, kind of, you don't wanna like just stick a finger and do it so. That's nasty. Ooh, oh yeah. Yeah, so we're gonna have to work on this one. Yeah. Gonna get the 
band. Skadoom, stretch it with your hand. Even better, stretch it with the brush. This particular hat, I kind of like messed up. If you notice, this might be one of the only ones I steam with the brim down. <laughs> Because I, I sort of like them to be soft and a little bit like floppy and messed up. And it's hard to explain. These are my Borsalino Anellos. I've got two of them in taupe. And I've always liked these to be really soft for some reason. I just sort of wear these around the house sometimes. They're almost like my pajama hats. That's what I call them. My pajama hats. Uh, sometimes when I'm filming, these lights get in my eyes, so I want to shave my eyes so I don't get like a migraine or something. Huh? Okay, but uh, let's take a look at this. This is a classic color for horses, you know, in the cold taupe. This is a color that matches anything. Um, I highly suggest this color. Uh, this would be a very, very nice color combination to do our Kevin hat in, I think. This one. What do you think? Huh? It's very difficult to source this color. Um, Borsalino makes hundreds of colors. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen their color book, but it's like a dictionary, really. There's just pages and pages of swatches. You know, like if you like brown, there's just a brown section you flip through. And then tokes like this, they have like four or five that you'd swear are the same ones, but you're like, no, nah, they're actually a little different, you know? This is a classic color that a lot of Borsalinos are known for. Um, the Verdi, the Como, the Classico, all of them come in this color. Um, the film, the film in this color was a huge, huge seller. It's called Taupe. It's a color that's between green and gray, and it has even a touch of brown. So it's a, it's a gray that's like, it doesn't lean towards a bluish gray, it leans towards the brownish or greenish gray, okay? So, like if you're, you're touching, the, you're doing the warmth, you know, when you're adjusting colors, warmth, you go towards the green side or the like brownish side or the bluish side. So this is the earth tone side. This, the color matches everything. It'll match all of your black stuff wonderfully. Like everybody wears gray with black or black with black. I'm tired of that. It's good, it's classic, but it's not the best. This is nice. This is really nice, you gotta say. It's different to wear with, with black. You could also wear this with like an eggplant purpley color because this really matches well with that kind of, uh, what do they call that color? The aubergine, aubergine. Um, it looks great with navy blue. Navy's a hard color to match. Navy, you could wear navy or you could wear gray. And that's it. This looks good with navy. So obviously it looks good with all the earth tones. Olive, brown, right? We know that tan, it's obvious. It'll look good with that. Any of those Indiana Jones colors, from natural to tan to brown to olive to dark brown, this will match all those colors, a trench coat, right? It'll also match a purpley eggplant color, okay? It matches black, and it crosses over to blue, too. It goes great with almost everything. It doesn't go great with, like, bluish grays and stuff. Like, some grays could clash with it. It depends. Others, you know, you could just kind of wear a taupe or a brown scarf and brown pants, uh, and brown shoes, like brown shoes, brown belt, something like that, brown scarf, and tie it into whatever you're wearing too. The bottom line is this color matches everything. I think it's a good color to wear in any hat. Um, a lot of times when you see this, they match it up with like a sage green, green, they bring out the green tones in it, but they never think to put brown on it, right? When you put brown on it, it brings out a whole other thing. It's like this earthy thing, but it's very modern and polished and very Italian looking and very fashionable. Um, they also make another color that's very popular. It's more of a bluish gray. And uh, that works fantastically with, um, with grays and navies, you know. But this will cross over to everything. So, uh, yeah, that's one of my Borsalino Anellos. I have two of these. I actually used to have more, but I gave so many away. That's a weird thing I do. See, look, after like two minutes of sloppy steaming, steaming without a table, it already looks like half good. 
the thing about these hats is you know if you throw them around the room, they're always one steam job away from looking perfect again. I mean, like this hat, I haven't steamed this hat in all, so long, and I don't really take great care of it. There's no lining, there's no sweatband, but it looks brand new, always. Um, so they're light. Can you feel the lightness of it? The sound is pretty light, right? Very light, and they're soft. You could do this with the Alessandria behind me, too. No, I don't know if I do with my vintage leather. I probably would. I fold everything. But, um, yeah, you can fold Borsellinos. You can also, um, what do you call it? You can reshape them on the fly. So if you want to turn this into a teardrop, you just do it, you know. And then you're good. And then you got your TD. Um, it's just the way they are. Uh, let's put this one on again because I want to show you something else. Here's something else. Okay, quality superior. Now I'm teaching you all about these hats. Don't go buying them from JJ's because they just got them in, okay? I'm messing with you, but yeah, don't, okay? Um, you could open up the crown on these quality superiors. If it's your Verdi, if it's your film, if it's your Alessandria, it doesn't matter. If it's your Anello, don't say, yeah, but your, your hats look like crap, Kevin. This looks like crap on purpose. You could make these hats, roll them up, you could make them into different shapes, it doesn't matter. As long as you do it with care and you do it correctly. Open it, okay? The brim goes down, you open the crown, okay? Just like a bell like this, all right? Ignore the wind cord, let it do what it does. Fold the hat in half, brim to brim, okay? Just brim to brim, let them touch, like that. Turn the hat sideways, squeeze down like this, okay? So you got a U shape. Neaten it up slightly, roll it this way, but do not fold it, roll. See, I'm going round. The idea is that all of these curves are totally round. There's not one, one, straight line here. There's no right angles anywhere, okay? Nothing has been pinched. It's loose, keep it loose. The idea is you put this now inside your coat pocket, someplace loose. You don't put it underneath your crap in your backpack with like tons of heavy books on it, because then, yeah, then it's rollable, okay? But it's not crush proof. You can't stomp on these things or whatever, all right? There's a correct way to roll it. I do have customers who just completely destroy their hats. They just shove them in bags all year round and then they come to me once a year for me to put them back together. And I do. And it works. Um, I had, well, I had. I had a few people like that. And um, most of them didn't tip too. <laughs> but they would come in with, uh, you know, like a big, really old religious hat that was all greasy, never clean. And they just roll them up and stick them in their bags. Like, you know, it's just absolutely, you know, just like, and then, like, it'd be like, I don't know what's wrong with this, it's messed up. It's like, yeah, you can't roll it like that. You know, I wouldn't, I don't even get into that. All I do is I just fix it, because I know it's gonna be back the next year. So I have a couple of guys like that, that you, you can't just roll them, roll them. You have to sort of open the, you know, brim goes down. This is the way you roll any hat. This is the correct way. Brim goes down carefully. Open the crown carefully. This is your baby, right? You know, be careful with it. Okay? This way, fold it in half. Okay? Down like this, right in the middle. So you get the U shape. Okay, you're going to have to do a little neatening up now like that because you're going to. You get a roll now, okay, into its own pocket, okay? Don't rush this. Go slow and keep it loose. That's where you, you can't be like a uh, cavalier, you know, like, well, look how fast I am. No, you have to be, um, just do it carefully, you know, with care. That's why my hat still looks good because uh, I roll it and I, people think I'm abusing it, but I don't abuse them. I. I know their limitations, you know, and 
And what you just saw, I did it twice for you now, I, I've literally done that over a thousand times, I know, because definitely 365 days in a year, I would do this at least two, three times every single day for people, you know? And I would undo it and, and unpop it, and it would always feel like a magic trick, because they would, like, start clapping, <laughs> like, ta-da, it worked, you know? But, um... Yeah, you could take these babies with you, you know. You have one of your old ones you like to bring to the movies, and then you got your baby, you know. Um, anything with a center crease is also very good for deuce trade. Is it Kevin? Were you asking me about that? Some people are asking me about this hat, okay? Let's talk about this briefly. This is a hemp Milan hat, okay? Have you ever seen this stuff? It's got a certain type of, uh, Chris Borsellino was asking me about this today. Isn't that amazing? His mom named him Chris Borsellino. It's his middle name. No, I think it's just his YouTube handle, but I joke about that. All right, this is called Milan. In the hat shops, we call this stuff myelin. I don't know why, when I started working, they kept saying myelin, myelin, myelin. And it's like, it's Milan, right? It's Milan. Some people say Milan. Um, people from like old school, you know, they say myelin. What this is, it's a braid, okay? You buy this stuff actually in, in braids. It comes like, like a bunch of rope, okay? You can look at Manhatco. Look at their website, manhatco.com. You'll see he just sells this stuff. Okay, so this stuff comes on a big spool, and what you do is you weave it into, into a hat, into a body, okay? You start in the center, okay? And it basically, it, the braid is sewn together, so you've got a row of hemp sewn together by a stretchy string, okay? And then another row, so everything, it's like layers. So what you can actually do with this hat, so let's say you want to steam it low, push it down like this, and you could steam it low, okay? You push it, and you... You steam it nice and hard, and then you just let go. Or if you want a high crown, you could stretch it up like, okay, like that, okay? It's kind of hard to explain it. But it could be down there, or it could be up there. You steam it, you hold it to cool, and you let go. Okay, Milan has a very specific kind of a quality to it. It's a... Uh, when you first get it, it's very crunchy and hard. It's like, kind of like glass, all right? It's um, laminated with like a plasticky stiffener, lots and lots of it. So when that stuff breaks down, or when you do this to it and you break it down on purpose, the crunching goes away and it becomes something totally different. It becomes this. So this hat is also like six years old. It's got no sweatband in it. Uh, and it's a double extra large without a sweatband, so there's like almost no structure to it. But um, what I wanted to say is, this stuff is very, very unique. Um, if you have Panama hats and you keep getting holes in them, like every few years you keep making cracks and holes and sweating through it and this and that, and then eventually you throw them out like every two years, every five years, every seven years, you switch to one of these. They have a really thick leather sweatband. It's the same standard leather sweatband that's inside like a Stetson Temple or a Saxon, the same one, okay? So it blocks all that sweat. It also allows you to take a, a hanky or like a, you know, a cloth and dry the sweat, okay? Because it's not absorbing it. So when you go into a restaurant, you could dry it off, sit down, cool off in the air conditioner. You put your hat back on, it's, it's sanitary, it's dry and it feels clean and cool. You have a cloth sweatband, it absorbs the sweat, it stays wet, and it's all sweaty and wet and cold from the AC, and you gotta put it back on your head, it feels like dirty, you know? Okay, leather sweatbands are good. I mean, they're heavier, it's like putting a belt on your head, you know, in the summer, but it blocks so much more sweat. What it does is it keeps the stains from ever getting to the hat, it just never really happens, okay? And they don't crack, they will not crack. You can step on this thing. 
you could do whatever you want. It is not going to crack. Um, they're stretchy, okay? So you can take this. At this point, it's so soft. Okay, that's Milan. I'm not saying go and do this to your hat. But as they get older and older and softer, and that spray breaks down, they get like this. Um, it's your choice if you want to keep it crunchy, if you want to keep it totally soft, or if you want to just keep it somewhere in the middle, which is like probably the best way to keep it. Um, I like that. I like a soft hat. I think it's just a cool thing. So I, I don't spray. It's easy for me to stiffen this, but I don't. But uh, one cool thing about them in Milan is that you could change the shape. You could go up or you could go down and you could choose either way. You could go out with a low crown, you could go out with a high crown. Go out with a bang. <laughs> but um, these are stretchy, look. I'm gonna just pull the top, okay, watch. So these stretch, they will never crack, never break. No matter how much you stomp on them. They may get out of shape, it's possible, but they will never break, so. This hat can last you one lifetime. Panama hat, how much? No, can last you like a few seasons. Panama hat is infinitely more elegant. Okay, it's woven by hands. This is woven by machine. It's infinitely lighter than this. This is not light. It's heavy, especially with a leather sweatband. I'm not going to say it's heavier. It's slightly heavier. Leather sweatband is going to add more, but you know, it does the job. It doesn't get dirty and never breaks. So that's what Milan is. Mylan or Milan is a straw that takes dye very well. So if you want a hat that's black or, or gray or whatever, blue, um, they use this because it takes dye. If you notice when you try to dye a Panama, the blacks turn out like gray. And then when the, the sun hits it a few years later, they turn like pink or purple. Or if you get navy blue, it turns into a weird, I don't know what color, like a year later, they fade. It, it doesn't take dye well. It's part of the patina of having a, a colored straw panel, I guess, but, um, you know, it's a natural hat. I say just leave them natural or bleach them out or whatever, you know, don't, don't color them because these take color way better. This is more like a 1950s Frank Sinatra kind of thing, you know, like Italian leather front shirt, Leonardo DiCaprio and the airplanes and that kind of stuff. It's like one of those 60s kind of things. They're very cool. It comes in this, this is the short brim, it's the Stetson uh, uh, Inwood, okay? And then they also have the Stratoliner version, which is like this size brim. You know what a Stratoliner looks like. Thinner band, same binding. This is almost like a mini version of a Whippet, you know? So if a Whippet's got a regular brim, this has got the shorter brim, like one and three quarters. Inwood is a great hat though, and felt, great, great hat. Definitely suggest buying those from Delmonico too. He's definitely the Stetson man. Delmonico is the man with Stetson. Um, Orsolino, obviously, Ben Craft has good deals on it. I mean, three fifty for a quality superior. That's sick. Um, I don't know what the Germans are getting for them now, but that's that's sick. And uh, I mean, I'm thinking about getting a dozen of them and hoarding them away, so when they disappear, I could sell them for five hundred. <laughs> <clears throat> but I won't do that because there's plenty of other things for me to sell. Um, there's also my auntie's hats, Aunt Midori. She has a lot of stuff. Um, I'm sorry about the video quality. I, I was in my like pajamas and stuff. I was wearing my Boston uh, guitar shirt. And uh, I just made a quick video from Matt. Matt, um, Matt A. He bought the um, one of the hats for me yesterday. And... Um, also worked out getting three Midori hats, too. Uh, actually, two of them, and one of them I gave him for free, because he got uh, one very expensive piece, two Midori, so I gave him one for free. And um, we were just talking. I said, look, which one do you want for that freebie? <coughs> Excuse me. And um, what I said is, I'll make you a quick video. And I made him that video sitting on my bed in my pajamas. Picked them up, you know, you could hear, like, my son in the background laughing and stuff. But, um, yeah, the room looks really sloppy, and I'm, like, not looking so, like, dressy up, you know, like this today. You know, not that All right. Um, I want to do a little bit of steaming with you guys. I want to keep showing you more and more steaming techniques, and I want to keep showing you, uh, you know, what's up with that and stuff, okay? Let's talk about that. All right. 
All right, here's a hat that needs a little work. Yeah, let's put that cowboy hat there. All right, this is a, um, a very, very soft kind of a velour. Do you know that those old-time velours, they feel like, it's almost like you're touching, I don't know, like baby's butt skin. What's like the softest thing you could think of? Like, it's velvet, but it's softer than velvet. It's like, I don't know, it's like kitten's nipple skin. Yeah, it's softer than a kitten's nipple. It's like that. It feels like a little baby kitten. It's so soft. This is velour, but it's not just velour. It's like, ah. Oh. I thought the key clubs felt good. This one is like, you just want to like caress it and caress it. It's so nice. So Borsellino. This is a Diamante 25. Um, and um, yeah, it's got a few little scratches. Not scratches, but like brush marks and stuff. So what I want to do is condition the felt. I want to show you guys how that works. First thing I do, generally, is I dust the hat. I always dust the hat. Let's put a little tape here. Just pat it down. Anything that you see could come off. And not to steam dusty hats. Pat it all down. Keep the leather away from your steam at all costs, especially if it's a vintage hat. You could lose your leather band in a split second by touching it to the steam, so just don't do it. Um, you could. It's, I don't know if it works that easily with the Jiffy, um, but it's happened. So, all right. Uh, all right, let's talk about this. I usually grab the sweatband. Okay, or I don't grab the sweatband, I just grab the hat like this, because what I want to do is I want to revolve. Okay, so I'm going to start, let's start with the uh, conditioning of the felt going all the way around, okay. Don't have to get too close, you just want every, all the hairs to just kind of get misted. Good brim brush. Over the top the same way. You could open the crown, you could put it on your, if you have one of these stretchers or a hat block or something. So you kneel round like a, round like a uh, counterclockwise movement on the top. Okay, I always like to steam with the original shape in there. And with the brim up. Brim should always be up when you're steaming. I don't think if you look at any of my videos, Got like how many thousand or something? Um, you'll never see me steam a hat with the brim down. And when I see other people do it, for some reason I cringe. Um, the upward position is the natural position for a brim. When you're snapping it down, even though that's the position you'd like to wear it in and that looks right for you, when you're snapping it down, you're breaking this, it's like a hinge that's, you know, that's not the way the hat is really made. It's not made like this, it's made like this. Okay, it's made on a wooden block, like kind of a curve, okay, and you're bending it. So, it's good to just keep it like this, so that way you could look at the curves, okay, you see if the front is bending up too much or something. And you want, everything should be right up for it to look good down, okay. So in order for you to have a hat that looks right this way, the only way you'll know that it's actually really correct is by seeing it up and knowing that everything is symmetrical, everything's not, nothing's sagging, okay? That means the brim is the way it was when it was brand new. That's what you want. I'm brushing the band now. Just the band. We're being a little more careful. I'm not playing, uh, applying lots of pressure like I did with the crown. Being more careful. Now I'm doing the brim. I'm brushing right into my palm. I'm not slapping it, but, but I'm going right into this pocket, kind of like in the back of the brush, I'm getting the tip of the brim. This will get out any lines from the packing, packing lines. When they sit in the, um, in the box, you get little rings, you know, about those little scratch scratches that look like rings. You want to get rid of that. Okay, that's step number one, okay? 
Next, what I usually do is I look at the shape of the crown and I look to see what's out of shape. Okay, these pinches are way out of whack. We've got a big pinch on this side and a little teeny one here. So let's see if it, okay, it's still there, okay. The original shape is there, but is it even? This is how you tell. You want to tell if the crown is right or not? Look at a bird's eye view, okay? Bird's eye view from the back. That's a great thing. You know who taught me that? Ida taught me that. Really long time ago. Ida O'Toole, the owner of JJ Hat Center from about 1997 to about 2023. Yeah, she showed me that one. It's go counterclockwise. This is how you even up the two pinches, okay? Symmetry is not easy for everybody. It's like some people's brains are wired better for symmetry, okay? This is gonna help you. You take the hat like you're driving and you get it straight, like perpendicular to your chest like this so that the center crease is straight. And you look down at those two pinches, you know, it looks kind of like, like that. And you wanna see if they're even, if one of them is going too far back or too far forward. You wanna get them to the same even space here, like them like a ruler going across, kind of like, you know, they should be even. This is a big problem. Generally, when somebody hands you a hat, those things are not going to be symmetrical. They don't have to be perfect. Um, the great Roderick Springer, my mentor, told me the hat should be a little bit uneven. It shouldn't be perfect. That's, that was his thing, and he was dead serious about it.